I'd like to call the November 18th special board meeting, board workshop to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you have cell phones in the room with us tonight, please put them on airplane mode or, or turn them off, please. Future meetings, Parks and Recreation Committee meeting will be Tuesday, November 19th at 7.30 p.m. Planning Commission meeting will be Monday, November the 25th at 7.30 p.m. Annual Thanksgiving Turkey Trot will be Thursday, November the 28th at 8 a.m. Community Park. Annual Town Tree Lighting Ceremony will be Monday, December 2nd at 6 p.m. right in front of this building in the Community Center. Town Council Meeting, the next one will be December the 3rd, Tuesday, because of the program on Monday. We will have a Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Any other meetings anybody has? None? All righty. Meeting on public comment. Okay, we got Sarah, Sarah E. Davis. Please come up and give your name and your address and everything, and then um, you have four minutes. Oh, okay, okay. awesome. Um, Sarah E. Davis, the, I'm representing the Sleeping and Suites at 501 Silo Hill Parkway in Emmitsburg, Maryland, 21727. And um, I read in the newspaper about kind of the proposed things that's going on. Um, especially like near to us and what I wanted to do was give you guys kind of a glimpse at what our property does what our, our occupancy is like what uh, kind of drives people to us um, may I hand you guys yes. some things thanks sure. thank you thank you thank you two one parameter two. he'll be here in a minute Commissioner will be here. Yeah. Mr. Burns will be here. He'll be here in about. May I have one, please? Yeah. So, this is um, a breakdown of what our occupancy looks like throughout the course of the year, and I gave you guys kind of a five year kind of snapshot as to what goes on. Um, year to year, though, we really don't maintain a large occupancy. We do definitely have particularly busy months, and that could be a mixture of something going on in Gettysburg, that could be a mixture of something going on at the Mount, that could just be straight Emmitsburg-driven um, occupancy, but we don't really have any specific drivers to us, and if you notice just from year to year to year, even say like our local corporate rates, that can vary very drastically. Um, there's local businesses in the area that we definitely work with, and um, Sometimes that business just isn't there. They're not traveling. They've got budget cuts, um, especially like with the government. The government is such a wild card because you have people in the area, but if they, if they free something up at FEMA, they're going and staying there, and that can change at the drop of the hat. So I just wanted to give you guys this information so you kind of know of what the actual hotel in Emmitsburg is doing from year to year to year and what our drivers are. May I, Cliff? Yes. Mr. Uh, what is RAC again? RAC, I'm sorry, I should have clarified that. RAC is essentially, I, I kind of, that's a basically the transient traffic. So that could be people that aren't necessarily here for business, here for government, here for the mount. I wanted to break down the mount specifically in two different areas as to what the mount actually pays for and then what actual people visiting the mount, what we have gotten from that revenue. But 40, and which is which? High, high sorry. 40, sorry, high 40 percent of your business is from RAC. Yes, so that's essentially somebody coming off of Expedia, Booking.com, Travelocity, things like that, booking online or directly through our channel, ChoiceHotels.com. Okay. 
where we don't really know what they're here doing. It's not because of a wedding. It's not because of a funeral. Um, it's just they're in the area. Okay. So. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, so what is the difference between Mount Pay and Mount Guest, just for clarification? Okay, so Mount Pay is directly what we bill to the mount. Okay. So that's if they're courting uh, a teacher, a professor, or something like that, somebody Understood. for sports, something like that. Okay. Um, mount Guest, family visiting, dropping off their students, okay. picking up their students in graduation, <clears throat> stuff like that. So changing gears altogether, um, are there any pending renovations to your facility? No. Like any upgrades or changes or new signage or anything akin to that? No. No. Okay. No. Um, as a humble suggestion, you might want to consider revising your highway signage as at oh, nighttime yeah. it doesn't reflect. Yes. So just that, that might help you, perhaps. Um, and beyond, and that was, that's coming on 15 where you have a, uh, a highway sign up there. Beyond that, Mr. Sweeney, nothing. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and also, may I add that my contact information is on there if you guys have any Perfect. questions. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Well, anybody else have any questions for her before she went down? Um, Mr. Reds? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Everybody, and she's the only one with someone for the public comment agenda item, public workshop. Zach? Mr. Sweeney? Yeah. Just one question. So, for clarification's safe, uh, sake, pardon me. Um, Commissioner Davis, uh, Ms. Davis, no relation? Any relation? I don't think so. Okay, all right. Just, just, <laughs> just want that on the record for clarity's sake. Okay, terrific. Thank you. You never gave me a discount anyway. Yeah, right, right, right. right. <laughs> I didn't get the give me Well, now we're all in trouble. All right, so. Zach. You're going to give Stop. me a minute. Oh. You're going to give me a minute. Oh, um, yes, Mr. Mayor. The mayor wants okay, to know first. Thank you. I just want to introduce the uh, staff has put a lot of time in preparing some uh, uh, a tabloid of uh, different things on uh, what you need to know and what uh, as input for our meeting tonight. Um, uh, competition breeds a lot of pressure on tap fees, the, what they're meant to be, um, uh, tax credits, formulas, maybe even a special exception for a, a particular type of investment that uh, doesn't, by its nature, uh, use a lot of water. Uh, but one thing we have to really keep focus on if, if we're going to go down this way is let's look at a, maybe a, a program uh, like Main Street. We go in, we're kind of growing into it. We have to be able to support the uh, people on the staff for that. But uh, uh, we, we do need staff, and there's a way that could, this could grow into something. Like in Middletown, it took 10 years for them to get their Main Street uh, uh, really up and running uh, full speed. But um, it's something like uh, uh, the first Main Street people don't have to be totally independent. They could work with uh, our, our, our town manager. Um, and formulas, there, there are all kinds of formulas. There are rooms and there's uh, percentages and all kinds of things to uh, dice it up. But... You know, it, uh, competition uh, demand calls for maybe looking at these things, and and like I said, maybe a special exception for a type of use that really doesn't use um, <coughs> the gallons of water. Then, but we do need to increase our supply uh, clarifier. Uh, we may need to have a, a change in code uh, because if uh, we're if there's ever going to be any negotiations. I mean, there are things to have to be done all the way down the line on this and uh, uh, to keep it moving. But um, uh, I just wanted to give that sort of little preamble before we go get a program that uh, we're ready for it. We had sustainable communities, got a soft launch, got a million dollars worth of stuff invested, dollars invested downtown. And now, uh, since we have a need on staff for a person that maybe look seriously at Main Street as at the timing. Um, when I first got in the office, um, our planner at that time said, no, it takes too long to do that. Let's just go with sustainable communities. And I like that. And the EVPA has always pushed for uh, Main Street going back 20 years. Even when I was president, I pushed for it so, of EVPA. So uh, with that being said, uh, if you want to turn it over to Zach, it's uh -huh. yours. Yeah. Okay, Zach. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll go ahead and get us started. Um, so what we've done 
over the course of the last couple of weeks is basically reach out to other municipalities and talk to them um, about their economic development. What do they do for businesses coming in? What can they offer so we can get a bit bigger picture on um, Emmitsburg's bigger than just a proposed hotel. We want to continue to move forward with economic development. So what is it that we can do moving forward to encourage um, businesses to come, the, come to town? And so we, we had a lot of phone calls, a lot of good information came across our desk. But what we wanted to start with is um, just kind of an overview of the state of your water. Um, capacities uh, in the town right now. So uh, we touched on it the other night. Um, our remaining water and sewer taps, basically your connections, allowable connections to our current systems with the capacity that we have as of today. Um, sewer is pretty straightforward with the construction of the new wastewater treatment plant. We have 838 um, taps available. We're gaining three back from Duncan because of the change of use. Rudders will be using seven. And we just added the proposed hotel at 46 taps, which would allow you, which would have remaining 788 taps for your sewer system. Sewer system looks, we're in good shape. That's why the system was built so large, was to allow for future capacity. Your water, your water uh, taps, it's another story. Um, we have anywhere from 164 to 260 taps available. The reason that there is a range, the 164 uh, tap is based off your 2015 comp plan. In 2015, your flows to town were significantly higher, upwards of 300,000 gallons per day. Um, since 2015, the town has invested money in leak detection, in the LG Sonic, we've also uh, fixed uh, a lot of um, water leaks throughout town. So our flows to town now are only about, averaging about 235 gallon, 235,000 gallons per day. So that's why we have a range, because that number can change quickly, depending on the stat, the capacity, leaks, et cetera. So with that being said, if you do the same calculations, you're down to anywhere between 114 taps and 210 taps, water taps, with the, the current situation with no changes being made. Um, just an overview of the Emmett Gardens water treatment plant. In 2008, the construction was a million eight based off inflation and the con consumer price index rate of 21.1%. We adjusted with the inflation to approximately $2.2 .2 million to construct the Emmett Garden um, water treatment plant. That treatment plant will create approximately 476 new taps. Um, if you do the math, that's an average of about 4,500 per new water tap. Um, technologies have changed in the last 11 years since it was designed. We may need a new design. Um, so this is just a ballpark guess of what it would cost. It does not include an approximate one mile wider water piping that's still included or required. And it does not include the cost of hiring an additional water and sewer operator to help operate this plant. Um, <clears throat> the price does not include the cost to treat the additional sewer and water. So that's just an overview of, of some things um, that we'd like to talk about. What didn't make it into the packet is the construction of a clarifier, which we can talk about um, later. The tap fee per residential unit, you'll see in 1999, um, your water and sewer tap fees were 2,500, and then they went up to 3,000, and then 3,500, in 2002. In 2004, your sewer went up to 7,000 and your water stayed at 4,000. Um, in 2004, they added a surchar sewer surcharge um, to sewer and then they added another one to water in 2006 to bring it up to 11,000 for each. In 2008, 
your water dropped back down to 7,500, and then in 2011 down to 4,000. 2012, it went up to 8,200. In 2011, your, ta your sewer uh, tap fees were 8,000. So these tap fees have been in place for the last eight years, give or take. Um, Ms. Nail painstakingly called each and every single one of these municipalities to see what their sewer tap, water tap, and impact fee. Um, so we put together a comparison chart to see where we lined up with other municipalities. So overall, we charge $17,400 is a total fee per equivalent dwelling unit. That includes a $1,200 impact fee, but impact fees are only charged for residential. So 16.2 is for commercial, 17.4 would be for residential new construction. As you can see, Boonesboro overall is 22,000. Um, Brunswick is at 8,700. Poor Burkittsville unfortunately has had nothing in 50 years. Um, Frederick City is at 17.6. Frederick County is at, um, 12.8, Middletown overall is 25,000. They charge a $7,000 impact fee. Um, Mount Airy groups everything together. They're at 22.9, Myersville's at 14.5, um, and then Rosemont, Thurmont are, high to, are in the high 12,000s, Walkersville at 13.5, and Woodsboro at 15. So as I mentioned the uh, previous meeting, we were kind of middle of the road. We weren't the lowest, we weren't the highest. So that just kind of gives you an idea where other municipalities um, have their rates at. And then that's the taxes. Um, I'll turn that part over, the tax part over to Zach. Okay, so at the last meeting, we had a brief discussion regarding the hotel occupancy, which is better known as your pillow tax. Um, unfortunately, with our research and we reached out to the, the, um, the town attorney, the town cannot charge a hotel occupancy tax because the county charges the tax and gives more than 50% of it to the Tourism Council, which is the Frederick County Tourism Council. And this is per uh, those code sections of Maryland government and also Frederick County. So unfortunately, we, go ahead. we could get that if we were Main Street, right? Yeah, we could get a portion of the uh, pillow tax if we have a Main Street program. So business property tax incentive samples. So I reached out and uh, spoke with other towns to see what they do. And uh, this is what I found. So Frederick County, they offer what is called a small business tax credit. So the businesses must be at least 2,500 square feet in new or expanded um, premises and employ at least five full-time people um, within the first 24 months of their after occupation. So the current county property tax rate is $1.06 per every $100 of assessment. So assuming a seven to $8 million uh, business comes into town, they're going to get an average of 133,000 to 152,000 of tax rebates within the first six years. It's based on a six year cycle. First and second year, you get 40% tax break, uh, third and fourth, 30 and fifth and sixth, 20. And then the seventh year, they'll be back to normal tax, um, getting their taxes. So any business that comes in has at least 2,500 square feet and p employs five people, they're going to get this tax credit. So I took, um, I have three sample tax incentives that I wanted to show you just to have, just so you have options. Um, so this is assuming that the town adopts the county's exact small business tax credit. Middletown also does this, the same thing for their businesses. Um, our current property tax rate is 36 cents on every $100 of assessment value. So assuming that a seven or $8 million business would come assessed property value business would come in the town they're going to see a tax incentive between 45,000 and 51,000 so this is going to be on top of the county's rate so they would see a combined um, county and town tax savings of 178,000 to 204,000 in that six year period so the next town sample tax incentive, this is a more aggressive small business tax credit for a five-year model. 
um, using the town's current assessment tax rate, um, you're going to see a savings for the business of between 75000 to 86000 again, assuming the same assessed property value. And then there's a third, um, assuming the town adopts an even more aggressive small business tax credit for a 10-year model, um, they're going to see a savings of at least 138000 to 158000 depending on their um, assessed value. Do you want to talk about this one? Um, yeah, I think we already talked about this, that we found in all the municipalities and all the managers we talked to, um, as far as a tap fee waiver, waiving any portion of the tap fees, the city of Brunswick is the only one in Frederick County that allows a waiver. Basically, they state that the ca their, their formula, which is, is not set in stone, may waive up to 30% of the total tap fees for new commercial property only and they also offer a connection fee payment plan that allows a five-year tap fee payment plan to pay, be paid with quarterly water and sewer bills. And they have this as part of their, their code, and, their, and it requires an ordinance change because as right now, the way our code states, um, we can't do anything with anybody that's less than 2 million gallons per quarter unless there is a code change and that's our that's our basic presentation we have you know if there's questions you know we'll do our best to answer them and, and facilitate discussions um, I do have information on a clarifier which um, talking to our water staff is uh, we believe is very important to continue to maintain the capacity that we have and also add additional capacity save the wear and tear on the water treatment plant and prolong the need to construct a new plant, um, at least for now. Yeah, these were the only things that the other municipalities are doing. The county offers one more, however, you have to employ over 25 people. And so this is everything that's being offered in Frederick County right now. 25 full-time? Full-time. Okay. It's more manufacturing. Okay. And you get one or the other. You, yeah, don't, you can't get both. And so they felt the one that Zach presented would apply to most businesses that would come to the town. Does the county or Middletown or, well, the county, let's stick with the county and Middletown, do they offer enterprise zones or designated growth areas that they frame these opportunities for, like the, the discounts for? Okay. Yeah, so that's a state level. Um, the enterprise zone is a state level uh, credit. So it's right. going to be off your state income taxes. No, I, I'm with you there, but I'm saying, well, regardless of the vernacular, do Middletown and Frederick County designate certain areas where they want to see this growth, and therefore it only applies to those set areas? Not Pri Priority funding areas? Uh, correct. A similar idea. We are one, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, we are one. Um, not, in our, not in my discussions with Middletown did he mention that they, they do that. Um, I don't know about the county. No, it's it's a state level thing. The county and Middletown, to my knowledge, do not offer that. Okay. Good. With our coast, with it being so close in proximity, to Thermont, what are the is their water capacity so much higher? Their water treatment so much higher that they're able to charge so much less? Or what's the What's the extenuating? I don't. I don't. There? I don't know. I don't know why. Why one municipality charges more or less? We tried to research in our minutes of why they changed the tap fees, and the only one that I could find in the minutes of why they changed the tap fees to eight thousand was for the construction of the sewer plant. Um, what each the cost of the sewer plant and what the co cost of the tap would be. Um, the town of Thurmond is a well system. So I don't know if their capacity is greater than ours or not. Okay. And we're still on the hook on a monthly basis or on a quarterly basis to pay, to service the loan for the new wastewater treatment plant. We're still yes. making payments on that and will be for 20 years. Uh, 15 so years, 20 years? I think it was like 20 years, 25 okay. years. 25, okay. <laughs> water plant, we have 15 years now? On the water plant? I don't think I brought that coal 
Cole printed me out a whole list of our loans and, and the balances, but I don't think it's sitting on my desk. I don't know off the top of my head. No, the water plant's not paid off, so it's new too, so it's right. a couple years earlier than the sewer plant. So the one thing about the Main Street program is if you are a Main Street manager program, they do offer um, grants that we cannot get as part of, of not being part of Main Street um, that not only help the town but then also help businesses. And then your Main Street manager works closely with your current businesses and any potential businesses to, to help guide them through all the tax incentives, all the permits and zoning requirements, not only at the town but also on the um, county level. Um, in talking to Middletown, they had a part-time person for seven years, seven years, and they just went full-time with a new building. Uh, the, the commitment was about 50000 initially that they committed to the program. Right. You That's about the same for not another town, too. Yes. Um, go ahead. Uh, I know in the last meeting we were concerned uh, about the remaining water taps available, uh, and there was discussion about the new homes that are being developed. Um, I know uh, Zach and I spoke earlier this week or last week about it. Um, is there still that concern, obviously, with the group that was building up in the Pembroke and Brookfield area has since pulled out in right. the last few months, and I know there's been zero progress made right. in Southgate. So I know there was concern expressed that, okay, those are all going to get built and we need those water taps, but obviously in the last four months it's been shown that everybody's kind of backed out away from those, and so are we still overly concerned about that number, or is it something that's in play now right well for those homes uh, Brookfield and Southgate that you referenced because the the plat was adopted we had to guarantee services so we have to keep those taps on our books um, as being used or allocated for how long forever okay yeah forever because you could come in 25 years from now and we still have to guarantee you water service um, there so we have to keep those in our calculations um, talking to our water staff, our, our public work staff, um, to them, our, our critical number is 100, where we need to have something in play. And that's why we talked about the um, clarifier. Um, with, with the clarifier, which is, you know, obviously we've, we've talked a lot about recently, what right. capacity would that add to so that So I have rough... I, I have rough numbers on the clarifier, um, and basically what the way you got to think about a clarifier, I know you and I have had some discussions on it. Um, basically, the clarifier removes dirt from your wall, raw water that's coming out of the lake. We cannot get the allotted amount that the state allows us to pull out of the lake. Um, we can't get our allotted amount. We can't get the max capacity out of the lake um, because of the amount of dirt and sediment and algae that comes out of the lake. Um, so what this clarifier does, depending on where you put it, it can remove the dirt from the raw water. You can have it remove the dirt from the lake, or if we pull it down close to the plant, it'll pull it from uh, the well also. So the water that's going into your plant prior to being treated is cleaner. So then your filters aren't going to back up. So you're going to reduce, significantly reduce the amount of backwash water that you're needed to clean the water and send it through the plant and then send it through the town. Um, basically, it increases the flow. Uh, the water treatment plant um, can move through. And I had some notes on it. I don't know if I could pin Dan down on the exact amount that he felt it would save. I can't find it. It, it. Not necessarily looking for a concrete number, but right. would it create more taps by? Yes. Okay. So, so it there, would. There's an increased ability through the clarifier to add more taps without. Correct. Okay, cool. Correct. We've seen what fixing our leaks have done with the implementation of the algae system. So the clarifier will significantly reduce the amount of backwash water and the water loss to increase your tap usage. Okay. Question. We wouldn't have to buy so much water for the amount also? 
we do that to keep the lines Queen. the residual yeah. so um, that would stay the same okay. also um, the uh, taps that you have you said you we must keep forever on the books they're, are they're already out of this they're already out of there yeah all right so that's so that's we're already, it's already taken out so that's yeah. remaining no matter what okay <clears throat> but they still want to keep it at a hundred that's right if you take the 46 out of now, oh, it'd be 114 to 100, 200. So we would still be remaining that even with those allotted ones taken out. Okay. Correct. I, I, the clarifier, do we talk about an uh, estimated cost? Uh, I tried to, I talked to Dan about it, and he was leery on an estimated cost because there's so many variables with technology. Do you want it to treat, you know, if we want it closer down to the plant near, with the, include the wells and the lake, that's going to be a higher cost. And what kind of technology do we want to do? Do we want it to clean it from the top or the bottom? Um, what we kind of wanted to do was get, um, get permission to uh, at least get an engineer to give us an idea of how much it would cost. Okay. Um, his, I'm looking at his notes here. Um, it looked like a pilot study many, many early 2000s. Uh, the cost of the unit itself was about 275000 I guess well, that looks like 2006. Um, and then you need uh, a building to house it. Um, another question regarding unfinished lots, mm -hmm. Emmett Ridge 2, is this part of the equation as well? No. no. So are they totally out or are they added back in? They are not, you mean as far as or, TAPs are concerned? Were they ever part of the TAP equation? No, they were not. Okay. They didn't get the same set aside, isn't that the right, like where Brookfield made the reservation? Right. Um, they did not. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Emmett Bridge was never an approved um, area, so they were never included in the calculations. Okay. And then main, the Main Street program, I remember talking about this years ago uh, when I first came, came on board. So wh what is the time frame are we looking for that to be implemented? It, it sounds like it's a several-year process. Mr. Mayor, do you want to answer that? Yeah, it it could take up to a year and a half, two years, maybe. Okay. Right? But you're, um, we've done a lot of of some uh, uh, work on it in a sense that we're 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 doing. Our staff is doing a lot of main street things. So we like to free them up to work on more appropriate things and have a main street person. Uh, that's that's that extra half person, but. Um, um, yeah, I think they could also help out with uh, what we've discussed as a community legacy grants because that's developed, you know, the, the grants that um, for the facades and on the main street. Um. But the extra person? Mm -hmm. the, the, the planner that we took off? The, for the, it's a main, they're called a main street manager. We, we, we discontinued a, a zoning technician. A zoning technician. But we kept them. Um, Kept the position open mm -hmm. for right. Right. the future. So um, the, their button and that's budgeted into our budget too, correct? No. no. The, uh, the position there. is still there, but it was not p part of this year's budget. Not a question, but just a sort of a clarifier because no pun intended. Um, <laughs> sorry. <coughs> the process, I think everybody in the board knows, but um, our tap numbers and our ability to grow and to accommodate and to change and modify the, the nature of the town's businesses and residential uh, you know, places in, in the future are dictated by what the state says we can produce in water, but more importantly, what we can treat, wastewater treatment. and. Again, I'm just kind of saying that for a clarification for our, our general audience beyond us, just so everybody understands that it's not an arbitrary number that we're dealing with. It's a top-down thing, and we are abiding by it because it is strictly enforced. And I'll go to the example of our new wastewater treatment plant. 
we were not very far in the uh, from the threshold of micronutrients in our overland lagoon system. And the state imposed upon us the wastewater treatment plant standard to meet their new standard. And therefore, we incurred a rather substantial debt related to that. So again, it's not like we're doing this to be good citizens and good environmentalists, which of course we are, but it's also mandated to us. So that that's part of what frames this. Um, Regarding this, and Mr. Sweeney, if you don't mind my asking sort of the group, does anybody have anything they want to kick around, any proposals or, or things for, for consideration? So you mentioned the state mandate. Yes. How far below, how close are we to the state mandate at this time? Like where, where do we stand as far as our numbers designated right here to the low end low or high end of the state mandate at this point is any uh, that's a it's, general question right. to everyone because I, I understand where you're coming from this but do we have the ability to the capacity to do more and still stay within that state mandate is it the With 788 that? for sewer that's the number of taps so the state mandate is how much they, they tell you that you're required to send for each unit, residential unit, you're required to send, state law says 250 gallons per day. So for every unit that we have in town, house, apartment, et cetera, you have to provide 250 gallons per day of water. So that's how we come up with the calculation. And that's what a tap equals is one, one tap essentially equals 250 gallons per day. Um, the, the estate, and I don't see that I've got the exact number here. The state tells us exactly how much we can pull from the lake yearly. The max amount we can pull in a day and the max amount we can pull in a year. And um, I, is it 168? 60 some thousand. It's 168,000 gallons from the lake. And then with the clarifier, see, we can't get 168 because it backs up. With Correct. clarifier, we could get the maximum allotment from the lake. Right now, we haven't gotten, we haven't reached. Our goal is always to get 50% of the amount we, of water we send to town from the <coughs> lake. Um, we haven't been able to get that amount since, I want to say since September. Um, with the clarifier, um, that would allow us to get to that allotment that that then that protects your wells where there's not so much of a demand on the wells um i I'm, i apologize i don't have the exact number that we're allowed to pull from the lake i thought it was 168,000 gallons on average but i have to look that but we're not close to that at this point no correct okay correct so with the addition the possible addition of the clarifier and maybe a rainy season right we would then be able to reach what the state limit is is the 168 right per per day or per right. whatever it is which would then allow for additional taps additional taps okay right. <laughs> at what point beyond the clarifier, would we have to look at the second wastewater treatment plant? Right. How, um, how, how high above that number would we have to, or do, is the clarifier a solution, not in the short term, but a viable solution for us to continue to meet the state mandates and allow for growth? I think the the clarifier will allow for will ext absolutely extend your your taps that you do have in play will prolong the need for the water treatment plant um, and it can handle additional growth. Um, my rough calculations is about 176 taps with the clarifier, but I I, I want to confirm that with Dan. In place um, with the new clarifier. With the new clarifier. Would be an additional. With additional 176, but I I don't I need to run that by Dan first. Um, which is good. Yeah, which is very good. So, 
It depends on what kind of development you're talking about. If you're talking about commercial development that uses three, four, five, ten taps, we're in great condition. If you're talking about a development that comes in with 500 homes, that's all going to be dependent on when we decide to build that new plant. Um, we don't want to be in the position where we don't have the water capacity and we have to turn things away, but we don't want to build it if we don't need it. We do need to clarify. Right, I, 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 I don't disagree. Long time. I don't disagree with that. With the addition of the clarifier and the ability to process more water, would that give us the ability to lower the water tap fees in any way, shape, or form because we're able to process so much more and we're not putting the strain Potentially. on the plant and things of that nature? I would think so. Okay. Um, just remembering that, you know, when it comes time for the plant to be built, it, it's going to have cost, to be funded. Um, I think for the clarifier, you're safe to say under a million for it at 275. If you add the inflation in a building, um, I think you're safe to say well under a million dollars for a clarifier. At least 750. 750. Five to 750. Is that something that could be built near the dam, or would it be built? In, I know this is a far off. Or is that something that one would expect to be built closer to the water treatment facility? The way that I understand it, and it's built closer to the water treatment facility, but the location will, de will depend on whether or not we want to treat just the lake or if we want to treat the lake gotcha. and the well. Understood. And so that's where we would ask an engineer to come in, gotcha. take a look at our system and say, this is what we recommend. How many mount, um, how many actual wells are on the mountain? Oh, it's five. Two, one, two, three. five. Yes. One, two. Three. Yes, five. There's five there, and and how, how many's down here that we don't treat two. at all yet? There's just two. Down here. Two. two. Okay. Seven all together. Mm -hmm. But um, if from if we're going to put a, a a brand new clarifier, and we should include the wells also. You know, it should treat everything as it comes in. Yeah, Dan had some reasons why we wouldn't do the well, but I think that's why we defer to an engineer and tell him. Because um, I, I said the same thing, well, if we're going to treat one, we might as well treat them all and get it over with. Um, so I think we would defer to what an engineer's recommendation would be. Now, does all five wells tie into the one main line before the plant? Two of the wells feed the storage tank. Off the of Crystal Fountain? Yes. And now you're getting me. Sorry. I just pulled up a map as well. Yeah. To <laughs> I was trying to figure out where they're hooked up. So. Yeah. That's getting a little plant. too technical for me, and I don't want to mis misspeak on that. Um, so two of them will be, is on, are on Crystal Fountain, and the other three are before the station? I believe so. So these are some things that ideas that the mayor, um, mayor's been really involved helping staff work through some of this and making some phone calls. Um, these are kind of some things that staff came up with with the mayor on um, things that we can become to encourage the economic development in. The Main Street program, I think it's time for the longest time. It wasn't something that the town, I think, was ready for. Um, but we've done a lot of work downtown that it's time to start encouraging businesses. They can offer a lot more incentives and grants than we can. Um, looking at different ways, whether it's a reduction in the tap fees or if it's a formula or if it's a special exception for certain users. Um, the tax incentives that Zach went over, um, these are all things that we've kind of looked for, looked at um, while protecting our water capacity capacity or water source so bottom line is we do have room for growth and we don't have to worry about running out of water tomorrow if we continue to grow at a slow pace and at a slow pace right. um i think it's something that we need to be prepared for sure um, and it sounds like we well, do we have start some with the clarifier which right, we do have some <laughs> options in place right but the um the, the money we get for the clarifier, it usually comes from selling our water taps, sewer taps. 
That's the extra money that we use to pay for the extra stuff that we need. Or that's the whole idea of the, the, the development of the TAP fees was to pay, solely pay, as that's why they call it an enterprise fund, is to solely pay for your water and sewer infrastructure. That's the idea of what behind TAP fees. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. Yes. So hotel excluded. Um, I see that Rudders is, what, seven? About seven water taps and seven sewers. So that's probably a general rough estimate for a, a normal normal business that doesn't have a lot of occupancy and a lot of water usage. Correct, do, yeah. Do, are we looking um, at the number of taps that are left? Looking at my map here, the commercial areas um, where the proposed um, hotel is to the other hotel and then across the highway if they're zoned as commercial putting in businesses there um, do we feel safe even with those areas being built up or it would depend on what's being proposed clarifier? like you mentioned if it's a rest if it's a restaurant a convenience store or rudders they're probably going to use no more than 10 taps at okay. the at the very most. So that kind of development, yes, we feel confident in. It's when you start talking about residential developments that you you absolutely have to give one tap per house or townhouse or apartment. Um, that's when the concern would be in would be if a large residential unit were to come in. Well, as, as it stands now, I, I unless I'm looking at this wrong, we we can't put any other residential developments in unless we annex property, correct? Can we squeeze anything else in? I think Emmett Ridge 2 is finished. No, no. It's not built out. I don't think it'll ever be built out. Emmett Ridge, that was um, the one proposal that came and went quicker than we knew, was about 110, 110 homes. Um, I don't know why it fell through. And then, where else was Northgate. there? Northgate. There's... There's another section, um, it's, Court. Mr. Ritz, there's another development in the R3 district right below the Ballinger plot that's not annexed in the town. There's area right there for townhouse development. Um, right here. Okay. I, I don't have it on the screen or I'd be able to show people at home, but there is an open lot there. And other than that, you're, you're correct. Without the a zoning change. Without Bollinger a zoning property, change. is that in town? I'm sorry? The Bollinger field, is that in town? No, sir. No. Until the hole in the donut. It didn't, go, it didn't go through. They tried to annex for condominiums and senior homes, but it didn't go through. It'd be nice to have that annex in town. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. Mr. Burns. To, to break away from the water for two seconds, with the thought process obviously being... Uh, the proposed hotel would there have to be discussion with state highway obviously to improve our so-called on and off ramps southbound northbound and with the addition of rudders there as well has has there been discussion coming through town at all so for this? because obviously mm -hmm. you know our only entrance southbound is is through emmett gardens with the addition of a hotel mm -hmm. and the rudders there's going to be increased traffic and things of that nature has there been discussion about the possibility of a second off-ramp southbound or changing the southbound off-ramp or anything no so state highway already did their traffic study for rudders um they had minor improvements that rudders addressed um, the proposed hotel or any development that would go in there would have to do another traffic study that State Highway would have to review. But I haven't heard anything about additional ramps yet. Have you? No, I don't think there will ever be additional ramp coming off of 15. Um, what about on the 15? I don't think so. Okay. They, they try to steer clear from that, from my understanding, talking with them. Um, but Duncan also had to do a traffic impact study. And the intersection of Silo Hill Road and Silo Hill Parkway is on the cusp of needing improved so the next business that comes in that road might have to improve it at their cost so um the go ahead and state highway looks at the picture at, i don't know what you're gonna say looks at it as a whole picture so they not only address the intersection where the business is they look look outward so they may look at 15 yeah. but zach's right with them in an effort of limiting eliminating crossovers and, and ongoing and offgoing traffic to 15 I can't imagine that they would add 
add anything, but that would be up to State Highway. Right. I didn't know if that was a discussion yet with, obviously, with the Rudders yeah. and the Duncan and everything coming in. Yeah, they had to, um, Rudders had to do a lot of improvements on the off-ramp um, along 140, and they also had to do it at the intersection of, um, Arnie. Uh, no, um, Main Street and Silo Hill Road. But there's, they're pretty much limited now at that intersection um, because the, the bridge is being done and they don't want to tear up any more road. There was additional improvements that were necessary, but they said no, we're not doing them at this time. Okay, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> we, uh, Zachy, you uh, you all requested that, that we have a collector lane extension toward the bridge, and they the state. Um, which could you go into that? Uh, we didn't get everything we wanted. We wanted a longer point so we right. could back up the traffic to make the left hand turn, but they cut us back. Yeah, that's what I was kind of referring to there. Um, the Our traffic impact uh, engineer mm -hmm. and State Highway found that the, the turning radius there needed to be over 250 feet long. Um, they would only give us an additional 50 feet because of the bridge project. Um, they would have had to tear up a lot of roadway, and they didn't want to push it back another two years. So there's nothing that could be done. Duncan would have had to pay for that, but the state said no. And we they're they're in charge of that road so we couldn't have done anything but the state is picking that up right the state's picking up the tab for the extra 50 feet okay just just to keep the ball in play just quickly are are we okay on for, uh, going forward with uh, more research on the clarifier that good for supply yes. Yes. and uh, Main Street program I is there anybody at, um, I, I know yeah, Mr. Um, we need all the grant money we can get. Yeah, I know Mr. O'Donnell's been a big proponent of this. Are you okay? Are you, I, yes, sir. I, I don't know if staff needs direction from us through a motion. I don't know no. if we're here for a motion because it's a workshop. But no. straw poll, sh sh personally, yes, I, I certainly think we need the Main Street Maryland's program. I think it's overdue. I know we disagree on that, but I think we've needed it for a while. Mm -hmm. um, the other piece is a clarifier, if I understand how it works. Uh, I think it's a reasonable thing as it would give us growth capacity that we we do need. Mm -hmm. um, I think what we need to look at in addition to these things is uh, a notion of maybe identifying our own growth areas uh, from our own municipal perspective. And mm -hmm. this is going back to being involved with the comp plans. And um, if as a board or our planning and zoning folks come up with an idea of what they would like to see or where they would like to see it with our comp plan, I think we should give that consideration. And that way, I think that gives the board the tool to create incentives. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the issue that we've run into regarding uh, a hotel proposal, and that we as a body don't have that power to create incentives, nor do we have, well, no, we don't have the power to negotiate, but we might have the power to create an equitable system of incentivizing through the creation of zones where we want to identify development and push it. If that's, you know, um, near the sleep in or if it's somewhere else, mm -hmm. it, it gives us a little bit more power moving forward to provide a fiscal incentive of some sort to businesses. And I don't mean to be bland about the hotel, but I'm trying to be hypothetical in a way, and I'm also trying to be equitable to any business that we would see as something that would serve the best inter interests of our community. So um, th that's something I would ask the board perhaps to consider. And moving forward, you know, if we can do that in a timely way, maybe that can serve a few, uh, a few masters, so to speak. So I, I think that might be a vehicle that would help us uh, address some current questions that we have. Okay. What did you call that? If we create... Sorry, I might. Well, I'll say it this way. Through planning and zoning, through the board's interests, we could create essentially a priority area within our municipality, and that zone, we might have associated incentives to encourage the types of businesses we feel would be appropriate. So. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to interrupt. So you're, sure. you're, you're suggesting to 
modify section 17 of the code, the planning section? No, no, we're not, I, we're not I, I, can't, I can't cite the code number for you, so no, I can't speak to that. We're, I can't answer that question. We're not changing zones per se, but we're, oh, no, 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 we're no, no. adding wording to zone descriptions. No. For example, we're looking at the concept of an enterprise zone, not, not in the sense of planning and zoning, zoning, but an area in town that we feel okay. there would be appropriate growth. Now, appropriate is dictated by zoning, hmm. like the planning and zoning piece of it. But if I were to describe it as um, a priority location, okay, it could overlap with multiple zones. I understand. Okay. Right. Bless you. But it could also... Well, it would also, if we do this appropriately, give businesses the opportunity to perhaps see an incentive um, of sorts. And again, that's another thing we'd have to give a great deal of thought to. What I think you could do, and this is just Zach and I kind of brainstorming because this is the first that we've heard of it, um, in your packet is the sample from Brunswick, the ordinance and resolution that they did related to their water and sewer billing. You could probably do something similar to this via an ordinance and a resolution um, with an amendment to your code um, establishing the growth areas. So it could be simple, uh, something like that. We'd have to research it more, but just brainstorming that it could potentially be done that way. Um, Mr. Mayor, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> But we, uh, the staff did go over tax credits. Do you want any more information on that as an incentive, or, or you want to take your information here and just study it for a while? You know. hmm. Okay. So, um, <laughs> the resolution, if we make one of our own, mm -hmm. we'll go through planning and zoning first? No, it doesn't. It would just come here. Right, that would just come here. So, um, for, it's twofold. So if you if you wanted to do something like Brunswick did for the water and sewer, it would have to be it's, that would be done at the board level as through a public hearing. Um, but then if you want to make those growth areas, that would not go to the planning commission. It would be done at your level. Okay. So say we would have this go through. We would make our own. This says in here. This gives us incentives in, in here to use. Um, or rather, like a 30 has 30 percent or less off. Which one are you talking about, Brunswick? Yeah, five percent or five year payment plan. I mean, there's different options. This right, so this options. is just so if you look at Brunswick's ordinance, um, their ordinance just basically says we're going to amend the code regarding water and sewer billing within the city of Brunswick, um, for lack of better words, see, see the resolution for details. Um, so it says like where they have it all in bold, a water and sewer connection fee payment plan is established for non-residential properties, the, ter the details. And then on the resolution is where they say um, they can allow up to a five-year payment plan for qualified applicants paid quarterly, may allow a waiver up to 30% of the total connection fee credited in two years. And then there's some other um, restrictions as far as the payment plan. This is just a guideline. This is the only thing that we could find that had any sort of waiver or negotiation with their TAP fees. Um, obviously, Emmitsburg could set whatever they wanted, whatever percentage they wanted, whatever payment plan. If you want to quantify, this would be in play for anyone uses 20 more TAPs or anybody that uses X number of gallons, excuse me, more quarter. This is just a guideline. Do you need a, a motion or anything to maybe bring one back for our consideration? Um, Let's slow down a little bit. No, no motion. It would just be um, maybe some direction of staff wants to because um, this is just the basic information that we've pulled together. Yeah. Um, it needs a lot more um, work and maybe some more research. Um, there's like a lot the, of things to consider that we presented. 
Mr. President, I'd like to see if we could set another meeting, but this is, we need a lot more, deliver more work to you, more body work. Hello? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions for, on the, uh, the information that presented to us this evening? Our, uh, our, 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 our hotel fees that you come up with with the five taps per or five rooms equals one tap. Where did that, is that a national standard that we came up with somewhere? Or Yeah, from my understanding, uh, I looked at Frederick County's code today and we got it off of Frederick County's code, which got it off the National Plumbing Code. So theirs is more up to date, includes a lot more uses. So ours is very antiquated, but the numbers are accurate. We just are missing uses. So it's an accurate reading. So what does the county say? The county has um, basically the same exact, it's a RDU equivalent or residential unit equivalent, dwelling unit equivalent. So. Um, for each fixture, for example, there's different rates. So a sink would be two, for an example. Or a hotel room would be seven. If it had a kitchenette, it would be ten. That's all plumbing standards. And it's, it all goes back to that 250 you know, per day. That's how they calculate it. The National Plumbing Standard knows pretty much the average that goes through these different types of fixtures, such as a sink, a kitchen dishwasher, a commercial dishwasher. So that's where it all, it all ties together. So the, our numbers are very accurate. Okay. So our, our estimated cost that we gave the people interested in the hotel, what was that number again that we estimated? Um, let me see. I have that somewhere here. I think it was close to how our code currently reads, and that was a very rough number because I didn't get the number of fixtures at that time. That was close to, um, you talking about, oh, 746,000. Okay. That's what the fixture count he gave me. That's 80 rooms. I was told it was 86 rooms, though, which I'm kind of confused. Okay, so if it's 86, it'll be more. That was based off of 80 rooms. Um, you know, there's... For example, three urinals, or excuse me, 10 urinals. So just things like that. It all adds up. So 86 would be would 47 be, taps or 40? Yeah, well, 46 up there now, does that cover the 80 rooms that's there now? That only covers 80. Yeah. Um, he said it might be up to 86, so obviously the cost would increase. More taps being used. I have a question, yeah, Mr. kind of hy hypothetical here. Um, I don't know if hotels do this, but thinking of Emmitsburg as a sustainable community, do hotels utilize like the low volume uh, toilets and things of that nature and different types of shower heads that could bring down that fixture number? I'm sure, I'm sure they could, sure. Assumption number. Yeah, I'm looking for the right word. Yeah, thank, yeah. thank you. If they were a, like a green certified hotel or Correct. And I don't know if national chains do that. Sure. I'm not sure either. That might, that might be like the wave of the future now. I, I'm not sure. Sure. That's probably true, too. <laughs> yeah. It's probably more expensive up front, but in, sorry, it's probably more expensive up front, but in the long run, there's a, a, probably a very reasonable return on it that recovers those expenses. Didn't the uh, Homes for America, using the old name, didn't they modify their fixtures and therefore reduce their consumption rather significantly? I mean, that was part of their model. So I think we've actually seen it where it's been effective. So, and this is what the, the what had been the provincial house when it was modified. Yes. Okay. That's the average. So we looked, just talk back talking about water and flows and everything. We, t we looked at... Um, sleepings average flows and it looks like they average about 336 gallons um 336 thousand gallons per quarter how many rooms to sleep in how many rooms to sleep in how many rooms to sleep in huh? i think 80 
Do we know when Sleep In modified its fixtures? Do we have any knowledge of that for like green standards or diminished water consumption? That is no, so so not yet. Yeah. Okay. All right. Or I can't speak to what what we have. Understood. Okay. But the uh, the selling of those water tap fees for the, just for the 80, 80 rooms or would almost cover the whole clarifier close to it and the building. Sure. So we're essentially only using fourteen. Well, the reason I'm not going to hold anything back, the reason I ask about that, uh, probably the town that's built the most hotels, motels around us is Gettysburg. Mm -hmm. And I, I did check with uh, with them. I have a friend over there that used to be the borough manager. And uh, he was also now on the town council, so he was kind of interested in what we were doing over here. But the same size hotel, 100-room hotel in Gettysburg, the fee would be 348000 mm -hmm. So, you know, we're kind of almost, not quite double, but. And that's within the mm -hmm. borough itself. That was within the borough. That's not like a township. No. Yeah. That's why I was wondering where we come up with our number and it's, mm -hmm. yeah. I think we all agree that a hotel is its own unique you know, entity. I think if we were talking about just a restaurant, we wouldn't be sitting here. But you know, I think it's, it's good because it facilitates the discussion of what we want to do moving forward. Well, yeah, I think it's gotta, we, we've got to look at something with large numbers like that, large numbers, because what if we would have a, uh, a senior housing project that need, would like to come in because we need that? You know, Lord, there's the, all of our senior housing is full, mm -hmm. and we could have somebody come in with another nice proposal for something like that. So we need to have to look at it more than just for a hotel, but for something if that, if that makes any sense. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, well, senior condos would be nice here. It's a two-year wait right now across the street. Yeah, and I hate to see our, our, our seniors are moving out of town. You know, that's, that's the bad part about it, not that... Not that the hotel is going to help that unless we put them in a hotel for the rest of their life, but I don't think they want to go there. But, you know, we need to, we need to really look at that to see what we can do. And I don't know what the answer is. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I think we have people waiting for an answer. Uh, yeah, we hate there's, to. There's a lot of things that you can look at that we've, we've discussed tonight, which, and it just is a, it, uh, which way you want to go as far as moving forward with these tap fees um like i said whatever we do decide there has to be an ordinance change because right now you can't do anything um you know you look at the hotel individually or you can look at it you know you want to make an exception for a hotel do you want to change your calculations for a hotel do you want to uh, reduce your tap fees do you want to do a percentage do you want to do a payment plan there's a lot of options that we can look at moving forward you can put them all in the a resolution um, the payment plan and in the percent and the formula yeah. could go in a resolution if you wanted to do an exception that would just be an ordinance change um, but these kind of things they do require a public hearing um, since they're a change to the rates and income coming in I just feel we need a little bit more research to present to y'all in a timely manner of the but it would probably be somewhere around February for the next meeting but if somebody was in this room uh, and interested in investment, I think um, um, I, I, for myself, I'd be open to right now to a tax credit. If you bring jobs here, well, that's one thing you can walk. I, I think we really need to look into more formulas and special uh, exceptions for different models, say a hotel or some other model like a senior housing, whatever. But. Uh, um, I feel good we're, we're looking at Main Street, we're looking at the clarifier, let's get that done, let us let us get back with more information for you. Um, 
but we December's got a full. We have our audit presentation to in January. You know, and and uh, just give you a little time, time there. Can we? Um, we we do you we agree? Do want to talk to the Not necessarily. We don't. Um, well, I think we do need a, some kind of you know maybe uh, our own tax sooner. No, no. I would think so because you know Emmitsburg. We haven't seen any new businesses come to Emmitsburg, whether it be a, a hotel. Well, the Dunkin' Donuts is a Dunkin', excuse me. Uh, I come, you know, that's the the last thing that really came, you know, in a long, long time. And we we need to to try to attract something because we have this empty property that we're getting no taxes off of, and uh, you know, the, the to where I don't want to see Emmitsburg go nuts and grow we, we we do need to you know have something we, we've made the town nice we keep saying that uh, there's, there's tourist attractions we need for some place for people to stay we need to have some place for people to get an egg sandwich on a monday and tuesday yeah. you know <laughs> you, you, just, uh, you know really any any uh, on a monday and tuesday morning uh and things like that so we in order for that to happen in order to get another restaurant in town we need something to bring or not another restaurant or make it you know, viable for the restaurants to open more than what they are here in town. You know, we need to bring people, and uh, you know, we we've been kind of stagnant. And well, just just a couple of things real quickly on that that land. May I? Or do you want? Uh, are you? Am I interrupting you, sir? No, go ahead. Uh, okay. And then Mr. Burns is um, that that land uh, where the uh, proposed hotel would and the sleeping is right now was done under 1031. Uh, tax-free exchange so they can only lease it until the grandfather passed away then it's down to the children now they've started to sell it uh, that it hadn't been like no one's been interested I, I used to represent the Hess family and try to lease the land and everybody would come up to me and say well we want to buy want to buy want to buy and that goes back to 2005 so and it, it's so it's and uh, this gentleman here has been uh, aggressively uh, asking them about can I buy it? And, and it, it's it's come onto the market and it's moving. And um, um, there was a mention of uh, in Southgate, there's some lots there. They were bought at at a um, auction. Everybody at, down in Montgomery County, and, and the seven lots there, and um, everybody was just so surprised what their what this person bought these lots at. They would never ever be able to be built, be built on. And uh, at that time. And um, so that, that's pretty much. Mr. Brown, can we ask questions of uh, the property owners there? Yeah, he has to come up to the podium. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. How are you tonight? Very good, sir. How about you? Good. You, when we spoke last time, you talked about uh, the hotel in general uh, capacity of 60% uh, for most of the year, correct? That is what I understand, yes. Choice okay. uh, gave Just me that number. basing it off of the sleep-in numbers, over the last five years, they're averaging 13,765 guests per year. Do you have rough estimate, if you're doing 60%, what your projected um, total number of guests into town would be? Um. We can do the math if you're talking about. 60. Just, I, I didn't know if it's something you guys had no, thought I, about in the, in the future, or you know, because obviously with the potential of an additional, we'll we'll call it ten thousand people coming into town. That's that's a significant number. In the long term, goals of growth into town with the possibility of uh, restaurants and, and things of that nature. So. 80 rooms I mean it just I didn't know if there was a number that you guys had in mind uh, for your sustainability or anything of that nature uh, if you guys had a, a, a total occupancy number per year that you were looking at or anything of that nature not at the top of my head okay. I don't have that number but they're talking more about dollars um, and how much revenue is coming in also the two-prong approach that we discussed with choice and the reason choice or holiday Inn or best Western they were all interested in this community was because the footprints are already existing and we are losing them. So not only are we inviting newer guests who will look at the sign and get off the highway because there are two hotels now 
And two hotels is definitely the reason why people would turn in rather than one single hotel. Because where restaurants, there are a lot of restaurants, that's where people usually exit. So competition is very healthy. Secondly, uh, not only are new, we are inviting new people, but the footprints that already exist in Amitsburg, we are losing them to Gettysburg and to Frederick. Because FEMA is already here, has been for years, and they have weekly uh, seminars and people are not staying in Amitsburg. And so is Mount St. Mary's and their uh, parents. And then we have um, other businesses that come in um, seasonal, which are Scaly Bertie and all those. So the numbers with choice that they ran, they have something called a star report, which they run everybody in the 10 mile radius. And it's very encouraging. That's why we thought it was a very good viable project to come in. Is that something the board could be privy to? You can share that as a public document? I had to sign a um, non-disclosure. non-disclosure, so I'm not sure whether I can give that to you, but I can put you in touch with Choice directly, and Great. probably they might be able to share that with you. Thank you. But. I have those. Sorry. Okay. I have those. Yeah. If, you're, if you have direct questions, I do have copies of the Star Report. It, it would have just been in two, and he wants to kind of explain. Can you come up here yeah. to the <laughs> Yeah, if you guys um, want. I would love to be able to look at the document, quite frankly. I, I don't have specific questions right now, but okay. um, the concept of the retail shed is something I'm keen on learning more about. Yeah, um, I believe I have your contact information. Yeah, I you can, um, now it goes off of like, um, you could do at a weekly kind of snapshot, you can do monthly snapshots, you know, how much, whatever information you guys are looking for. Just rough rough estimate, 365 days, 80-room occupancy at a single occupancy per room. At 60% of that, you're looking at 17,500. No, the, the document that I'm considering is a market evaluation of the community as opposed to what your specific numbers are of occupancy and rates related. What, what I'm thinking of is like... Um, I reference the term uh, the retail shed, like basically like you know, we have a watershed and anything that would contribute to customers coming to your facility or pending you know, potential future facility. Um, if that information is available for the board to view, that would be a wonderful thing. Well, the star report is just going to uh, the competitive set of what's up in Gettysburg and how they're doing, what their percentages year, you know, year to year, what their occupancy was last year, this time, what, what has changed, stuff like that. So I don't know if it'll definitely, like, it won't tell you, like, the retail side of it, but it'll tell you specifically how other hotels are doing up in Gettysburg. I would love to see it if it's available. Yeah. Can you Thank send you. that to the town office? Yeah. So we can all see it? Oh, yeah, of course. It's supposed yeah. to be a, a yeah. specific, no though. Okay. And, um, yeah, um, I know. Your, your good questions are kind of. Are you guys good with According me? to you, Hi. yeah. I think so. well, it, it, this is for a workshop for every for the you know for any hotel or whatever mm-hmm. out there. Um, you don't have a sixty-five percent rate for a year, do you? The occupancy percentage? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, we don't. Um, it varies, obviously, depending on like we obviously have a higher demand season and a lower demand season. Um, but no. We're, you know, it's awesome if we do around 50, above 50, uh, but there's many times that we go below that. And then, like, even this year, we're at, like, 44% almost. So, and we still have another two months, but we're going in slow months. The government kind of stops traveling, at least to this area for us. Um, people kind of put things on hold, and then in the spring, it kind of it picks back up. We also get a large demand from uh, the mountain, but it's whenever they start, like, producing snow, Liberty, stuff like that. Then we'll pick up. I, I do have one more question. Um, say there was two hotels there. I mean, wouldn't that bring the occupancy down? I don't. Uh, it, uh, my understanding of what they're proposing to kind of bring in, it's it's two separate hotels. We're not the same. Granted, if it's another choice property, we're under that you know franchise. But I'm sure they would just offer different things. It's uh, there. It's possible. It's it, it's it's just like us in the the Super Eight or whatever. Right. It's different. It's whatever the clients want, whatever they're looking for, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, oh, I got a question for staff. If you have a... uh, yes, Mr. Davis. The county tourism, what do we get out of that? Anything? 
Okay. Be, be nothing until we're part of the Main Street program. Yeah, so they were, I mean, they, <laughs> I, I say nothing, and I don't mean I don't mean that because they do a lot for the town, and the mayor works very closely with tourism. They do offer us um, some advertisement in their their magazine, and they come up and talk to us and and, and give us guidance. Um, but as far as any tax incentives or getting the pillow tax, yeah. you have to be a part of the Main Street program. Am I right, Mr. Mayor? Mm -hmm. it, it's very. They do have hotel. Um, they do have um, so. grants for hotel because they wanted us, the Lions Club could apply for that for being a hotel, sleep in being there. We, they have, do have hotel incentive grants, some kind of hotel incentive grants so for tourism does. Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, so basically what happens is for sleep in, the money goes into this big pot at the county level, and then 58% of it goes to the Tourism Council, and then the other goes to grants, whoever has a Main Street program. So right. since... Emmitsbury doesn't have a Main Street program. All of the money generated by the sleep in or if there's a new hotel, we don't get a dime of it. So it just goes to some other community somewhere else. Right. And, hmm. and, and uh, we had to put Heritage Day, Heritage in front of our community day in order to apply for a grant through the tourism, which we applied five times on the receipt once out of the whole time. We had it. Probably had to change the name where we wouldn't have been allowed to. Yeah, I'm not Mr. Sweeney, and, and yeah. speaking to Mr. Davis also, um, again, for the Main Street program, I believe this is a qualifier, but if there is an event in town hosted by a nonprofit that can demonstrate that heads go into beds, it's $10 per room uh, that goes toward that organization, and that's, that's managed through the uh, Frederick Tourism. Uh, and, and, and that's, you know, that's sort of incentive to get events in your community. That, that bring people to come and visit and spend time and then have that egg sandwich and then uh, go on their way. So, But beyond that, um, the, the guide, I, don't, I had to step off the floor. I'm still fighting this cold. Um, thank you for the opportunity. If it's available, we would love to see it on you know, both folks. I, I didn't get a chance to say thanks before. Sure, thank so. you. Um, I just have additional information that my friend has just provided. Uh, Choice is shooting for 36,000 uh, footprints for an 80-room motel. So that's what the number they play with. So thank you very much. Have a good night. Um, I, I did have one question for you. I, I'm sorry, just, just, just one question. I, I know um, it sounds like we have a lot of things we're discussing up here, potentially in the future, to um, help out, <coughs> potentially help out your situation, help out others as, as well. Um, although it does take time to get, to get things together. And I know, I know at the last meeting you mentioned there's a property in – Gettysburg area that it's potentially going to as a choice hotel property itself and if they were if that happened then you would lose that opportunity can you give us a rough estimate rough time frame that 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 window of opportunity exists I am not privy to their um, their schedule or what they are do, working with and choice is not ready to share that with me okay. um, but I did but they did voice that uh, I might fall under the their protection zone. So if you are looking at the same flag, I might be able to look at other flags like Best Western or Holiday Inn or something else. Okay. But if I'm looking at the same exact same flag, then I might be within that window of protection that they might have. Okay. So which is which worries me. So they would hold it for you. No, they if they have it, then they won't I won't be able to get it for Emmitsburg. Emmitsburg will never ever have the same flag. Uh, because they offer that protection uh, to that uh, hotel then. So, yeah. so I'm very anxious to <laughs> nail that down. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, have they completed their study on this area, uh, the hotel chain franchise? Um, they call what is a, a site approval, and they have done that. Okay. Have you so, done your study on this? Do you feel um, comfortable with this? Not the feasibility study because that comes in from the lender point of view, but we've done the basic feasibility study and that um, shows us to be very positive. Okay. Thank um, you. We feel very encouraged to to move forward on this. We want you to come here. We were really to <laughs> yes, we it, want all your businesses to come here. At least I do. It's just, it's um, a little complicated. We're, we were trying to get the papers and stuff and everything in line and to give you, offer you something as an incentive. Sure. Thank you very much for all that. Thank, Thank you. you.
Right. Any other questions <laughs> for staff or anything at this time? We do need to set another workshop up um, to try to combine what we want. Um, we do need a tax incentive thing. Um, we do need that. Um, I would like to have a resolution or uh, one of these, uh, like the city Brunswick has uh, ordinance and a resolution made up if we can do that or propose to us so we can see one and make changes to it if we have to. Are we far enough along on that? Feel comfortable on that? Uh, well. give I, I don't want it tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I just, what we need. I mean, if we're going to have for our next workshop, that way we can see what we want to. Mr. Sweeney, when do well, you propose you the next that, workshop? It, once you get into that, I think we need to have it as part of just our regular meeting. I and mean, we can have another workshop to discuss it all. But once you get into wanting to amend ordinances and codes and developing policies, we need to do that. I mean, this is an open meeting, but it needs to be an action item. I mean, you can have a special meeting just for this. Does anyone else want another workshop? Yeah, I think we have some, some more work to do because, like I say, this should be something that we can have in place for any type of business that wants to come to town. Correct. Not, not and just, not just you know, not just a hotel, but it's because uh, we got to. We're going to be competitive with other people, and and we have to, we have to do something. So you'd like to have another one too? We'll come back with more information. If that's what the mayor wants, I'm right with him. Well, it's up to us. Yeah. No, we. Uh, I I support the idea as well. I think there's value to keep the door open to another workshop because again. There's, there's more to consider, and I think, well, my hope is as a board we're able to weenie down a process that's equitable, transparent, and can, I'll use your word, make us competitive. Yes, I support the... Um, so, um, we were busy December and January because we had the all coming up, so how about we do it for February? Is that okay with everybody? I know we're pushing it back from, they're looking to move forward, so we're, we're trying to get everything in line for them. So if they move forward, we won't be hurting you by, because you have to purchase the property yet and everything, correct? You haven't purchased the property yet. Oh, the land is purchased. I meant the hotel piece. Yes, we have. Oh, you already own the hotel piece too? Yeah. Okay. Would it be possible to before the workshop, obviously town and staff is very busy right now, but attempt to get outlines or rough drafts of these presented to the boards before so that the, the before the workshop, so the board can go over it individually, make themselves familiar with it, take notes, suggestions, or anything like that, so that when we do come back, yeah. we have more concrete information to bang out and hopefully come to, not necessarily a resolution, but some close to final detail along those lines. Um, do you think we could have it two weeks before? For, um, we have to set a meeting in February, maybe two weeks before the meeting. We can have some kind of uh, one, uh, resolution and ordinance, you know, maybe put together that we can look at. Yeah, that, 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 wouldn't, that, that won't take us long. That, that won't take yeah. us long to do if we're just going to modify How about the that template. Hmm? The, uh, the sample you gave us for tax incentive. I mean, you might have either. some. You might have some ideas of your own. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you know that um, that won't take staff very long to put together. I, I think Zach has a, a pretty good grasp on it. That I mean, there's potential that we could potentially meet in December for discussion on this as well, instead of pushing it back to January, February. Am I wrong? It's up to the mayor. We'll try to accommodate. We get the information just, together. Just a thought. Yeah. Can we uh, make a decision at the December well, we meeting? If we're going to have one December, we need a date thrown out. We can, can we discuss that at the December meeting? Obviously, yeah. like we do with the calendar. November meeting. Yeah. yeah. Well, she has it now. We can set it now, and that way we'll know Pardon? if we want to calendar do that. Is this going to be in the workshop? Right? Here, I'll look at it. You can look at it, Mr. Mayor. Here we go. This will be just on this. It'll be a workshop. Just on this, just like we did tonight. 
We got the 9th and the 16th. Would it be, 16th. Would it be out of place? Then it gives two weeks after the meeting yeah. to discuss everything. Would it be out of place to have staff? December 16th. Is that okay with everybody? They know what we're For another workshop? Up against. No, I think I'm just off. Sorry, here. I, think. I would ask that out loud, and no, it's not an issue. I don't think it would be, but, but ask Good. that. December 16th for a workshop day? I'm looking at your calendar. I just, okay. I'm sneaking a <laughs> peek over here. Though. It is the anniversary. <laughs> Is that a here? Monday it's a November. Monday. It's a Monday. It'll be a Monday. <laughs> it sure. is the anniversary of the Battle of the Bulge. <laughs> we'll pour saying. one out for them. Not a great American day. Was that the night the American, great American outcome. dinner for Christmas? Or? No, that's the 13th. That's the MML. No. That's yeah. the 13th. No, no, no. I meant. Oh, <laughs> oh maybe. <laughs> Mayor, was that the 16th? Was that the night you were taking us all to dinner? And we can just come come from after dinner, right? Yeah, great. Yeah, great. Yeah, all good. <laughs> we are having we have December sixteenth as a proposal date for workshop two thousand nineteen. Is that okay with the board? I hear no nays. December sixteenth will be the I work another workshop for the trying to get all the information condensed down. At 7.30 in this room, sir? At 7.30 in this room. Thank you, sir. Could, uh, for the sake of the holidays, could we put a back end on it? Is that possible? Well, if you notice, I, we put a back end on this one. Correct. Um, with Commissioner Sweeney's approval. So I'm more than happy to put a back end on it. 9.30? No Two later. hours? What's that? I can't. I'll go with nine. Nine? Nine. 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 Santa's coming. Yes. Mm. Got to get ready. All right, so we could do from 7:30 to 9. Yeah. Um, it'll be this. It'll be the same format to um, just go over the future meetings, public comment, and then your agenda items, and then any modifications to the agenda. So it'll be the same format. Um, we will try to get this packet out. Um, where am I at? Where do you think, Zach? One more question, quick. Yeah, Mr. Davis. Would it be out of line to ask staff? Say, okay, I'm sorry. To have the packet available by Friday the 6th. Wow. That's, that would be great. Is that that's good? excellent if that's realistic. Well, we'll try. But that's a pretty tall order, I would, we'll, add, we'll, I would we'll consider. We'll try. Okay. Um, but we'll send an email out if we can't get it out that soon. Yes, Mr. Davis. Have would a it, question? Is it out of line to ask staff if it would be possible to meet again now that the proposed hotel ownership knows what we're up against if they would like to meet with you all and offer suggestions back and forth and see if uh, well we're always open i mean everybody's that, always welcome to come in and talk to us about any any potential business um mayor typically sits in on those meetings so i mean we can, with schedules we'll do our best to facilitate it you know with the holidays and other work that's going on but um certainly if they want to reach out and come in now that you see what we're up against and, and you see some of the things that we're going to work towards if that helps you any or if it doesn't that way we at least we know what we're up against if anything at all if that's proper it is i mean it's, it's discussing timelines and process yeah any other questions so december 16 7 30 will be the town workshop 7.30 to 9. Alrighty. So we're going on to item number C, which is modifications to the next meeting, December 3rd. Correct. So I do have uh, two changes. Number four, the 90-day moratorium on small cell towers for consideration is not allowable by FCC regulations per the town attorney and MML. Um, I will tell you I sent her our attorney, our small cell, or our wireless infrastructure ordinance. We are, we have a very good ordinance already. Uh, what it's gonna take is changes to the aesthetics. Um, I am working on that. Okay. Um, I don't think that I will have it ready for the December meeting. I'm gonna shoot to have it ready to go um, for review for the January meeting. Thank you. Um, a question? My assumption is, and I want to be you know, false in my assumptions, uh, MML was a very strong driver in this mm -hmm. idea, 
and I'm assuming we're still working with MML to refine our language. Is that accurate? Correct. Correct. They Thank sent you. me okay. um, examples you. of municipalities similar to ours that have not only the ordinance, but all through also the aesthetics guidelines. And so I'm incorporating it all into ours. Um, it's quite lengthy, um, but hopefully we'll have to have that ready to go in January. And then I need to add one item. Um, ordinances to approve the contract for sale of 140 South Seaton Avenue for consideration. 140 South Seaton Avenue? Yes. So you want to add that? I would like to add that. Is everyone okay with that? Sure. Do you know yes. what the total agenda is now that we have? I do. So you will have the review of the wayside exhibits You'll have the presentation on the forest conservation amendment, the amendment for consideration for the buffer zone requirements, small cell tower will be canceled or postponed, uh, access and fee structure for the Emmitsburg baseball softball fields for consideration, um, two consent or three for the uh, Parks and Rec <coughs> Committee, and then the ordinances to approve the contract for sale of 140 South Seton. And then I need, um, if Commissioner Davis will reach out to staff about what he'd like to see or some ideas for the access and fee structure, because staff doesn't know what direction to go in. Okay. Um, Mr. Davis has another name to add to the uh, consent, consent agenda. agenda. Okay. Uh, Amanda Ryder. And that should fill me up there. And then I believe also I have one more would be Diane Walbrecker reappointed to the Board of Appeals. Okay. Nice job in uh, getting some people in your committee. I'm paying them. <laughs> I had no idea. Any other thing for the I haven't been up this class yet. I'm sorry. Need a motion to to adjourn the meeting? I make a motion to adjourn the meeting this evening. I second it. Motion made by Commissioner O'Donnell, second by Commissioner Burns. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Thank you for coming to the meeting. What time, sir? It is 9.08.